today to connect with my dear stakeholders. We know that times are challenging and yet in this COVID era, we could get so many people together at one platform in itself. Uh, is itself the capability of Raja Vais, who has brought all of them together at this platform. Yeah, I have I witnessed to his first conference uh, two years ago, and I'm, I'm sure the same zeal he comes, he brought. He brought a lot of energy amongst us, all of us, and brought us to a platform here. I thank Mr. Raja and his team who has worked ceaselessly to bring us all together and enable us to share our thoughts, exchange our ideas. These are the platforms where we all are busy people in our own routine, but yet we take out time and joyfully be here uh, so that some thinking happens and we all are able to improve little bit by our own contribution and little little manner. So here I am today to represent uh, the government, uh, government's initiatives and uh, government is very very serious about uh, this uh, business. Uh, this business is not simple as uh, all the esteemed speakers, Mr. Malal and all others have stressed that it is, it is a very vast area and in this vast area, lot of, uh, I say the key to unfold the potential lies with the various government agencies important thing is the government agency here yes, because this industry is highly regulated by the various laws, various rules, regulations, procedures and I think there is hardly anything which does not touch this industry. It's across there is a shipping issue, so DD shipping comes into the picture, insurance comes into the picture, there is an infrastructure issue. So the port comes in picture, there is tourism development in the destination, so stage to uh, development bodies comes. We have to have secondary ports as Mr. Mala pointed out beside the major port. So the maritime ports come into the picture, there are uh, uh, foreigners visiting this country. So POI is uh, involved, Bureau of Immigration for faster clearance, then this is in the custom area, so the custom is involved, it is the port health office of the port health law. So, 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 there is a, so, so on and so forth, there is a ministry of tourism involved, there is a, a, a ministry of shipping, so uh, I, mean, I can go on uh, uh, saying, but yet I think somebody will come out and tell me, Mr. Ray, you skip this one. <laughs> So there are so many of them, so many of them. I am glad that uh, I am connected with this industry and uh, uh, I, I see people quite passionate uh, in different areas to contribute to the, uh, this industry so that it, it is established in India and to its tru truest potential. So here I am taking you through uh, a small presentation. Feel free to ask any questions at the end of the presentation. I will, of course, request uh, organizers to bear if we go beyond certain limit, uh, uh, time limits. So you all know that uh, the, the, it's uh, primarily five ports, but two more, Noizag and Kolkata, and a lot of uh, uh, issues are involved in that. Today, there is this task force, which is uh, Form, form that we as the apex body under the Secretary of Tourism and Secretary of Shipping is incidentally meeting today at 4 o'clock. So that's a very important development that even during COVID they agreed to 
hold that meeting. So the, uh, this slide shows the potential of India that what is the capacity, what is the capability of the Indian economy that from 2 lakh passengers in 2016 it can go to 40 lakh passengers in a span of 25 years and it's a very big number and it requires a huge infrastructure and even this 4 million is constrained by the capacity not by the number of people if you if you create very very seamless very cost effective uh, this thing it can go to 8 million or so so as we see the, 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 the ships will increase there are fantastic uh, possibilities lying ahead so the government and the largest thing uh, I mean the major thing of importance here is the contribution to the job creation. Job creation is a major benefit. Uh, now here I am coming to the what are the initiatives the government is continuously taking and many of these initiatives what you might feel that are a given thing. For example, guaranteed birth to cruise ships. I mean, how can the business be there if the cruise business, the, the ship does not get the guaranteed birth? So it's a very, very preliminary thing. But yes, what is a preliminary thing is a very challenging thing in the context of the port, which I'm sure uh, the people, those who are dealing with this, they are facing it every day. So in one of the slides, uh, Commander Malal has pointed it out also. So first thing the government did was a guarantee of birth to the ships, whenever they come, whatever. They have to, of course, give some timeline before they arrive, so that other plans take place and then the cargo bulk or cargo ships can be handled somewhere else. So, this is a very important thing that guaranteed births to cruise ships. It may look very, very preliminary, as I said, but it has a fantastic importance from the perspective of the entire uh, business. Then secondly, there was this issue of ousting charges because when you remove somebody from his, say, uh, you know, what time somebody is, uh, has taken a, a suit for 10 days and on third day you say, sorry sir, you break it and you go to another suit because this somebody else, some other cruise ship is coming. <laughs> so what is the replication? So the replication is the ousting charges, but then that we removed because that is a cost to the cruise ship and as the previous speaker has pointed out, the cost control is a very, very important issue for the uh, cruise lines. Then concessional uniform single way for all other ports. Now every port is an independent entity. They spend different amount of money on various uh, um, facilities they got different liabilities, so their rate structure are different. For example, before the government and the ports started looking at this issue, five ports had five different structures and believe it, it was varying from one, the difference was from 1 rupee to 3 rupee. For example, if somebody is charging 100 rupee, the other fellow is charging 300 rupee for the same services. And when you talk about a ship, which is in a huge numbers, so this goes from somebody charging 20 lakhs to it goes to 60 lakh rupees. Okay. So that is the kind of a difference. So government brought it down to a single uniform rate. So nobody will charge more than this. And it doesn't matter even if you spend more money. So that was a very, very important uh, state. I'm sure uh, the cruise lines welcomed it very, very well. And then they responded by homeporting some big, big cruise ships to Mumbai and of course, which were visiting nearby other ports. So this was also very, very important, very big state. So there are the states which were taken at the port level. Now we go to the what is one aspect of uh, the cruise ship uh, business? As I said, immigration 
is a very important stakeholder in the process. If they do not clear the number of passengers swiftly, or they do not have a regime of easy e visa issuance on arrival, then it would be a disaster. So, first thing the, they did is e visa and on arrival visa facilities have been started in the ports, in all major ports. So, that has allowed a lot of uh, cruise passengers who are foreigners to get their visa. Then, biometrics is an important element of e visa regime that was exempted in ports by the POI. Then the single e lending card is introduced. This is also an aspect of A, BOI, B of security, that is CIS. So this e lending card was introduced and this was made valid for all the ports where these cruise ships visit. For example, there used to be a different cards issued by every port for the same ship and the crew and the passengers who would visit them in their itinerary. So you can imagine what kind of efforts it used to take for on everybody's behalf. So that was done away with that. So single key landing card was introduced and it was barcoded so it can be uh, taken, downloaded before the ship actually touches the shores of uh, India and it could be uh, in a jiffy, less than 3 to 4 to 5 seconds a passenger could cross over from immigration areas into non-immigration areas. So these are very revolutionary changes brought. Why I am saying revolutionary changes? Because our system was very rudimentary, very regressive, so a lot of progressive efforts happened because of this e-landing. That was about POI. As I said that DG shipping also controls uh, the cruise industry very, very steeply and that was the requirement of cabotage. But the cruise ships are all owned by the foreigners. They have a foreign flag. So, if we do not allow the cabotage relaxation, there could be no foreign ship visiting Indian ports carrying Indian people from one port to other ports. So, this was a very important state taken and a cabotage was relaxed and it is now very difficult for 24. Again, we come to the now port side. The cruise terminal needed to be upgraded. New cruise terminal needed to be uh, built up. So all of these things were taken up by the ports. Spending a lot of money, of course. Construction of new cruise terminals. So all the ports they started building the new cruise terminal. Now, we are continuing on the measures taken by the government, that is the government initiative. Roadmap drawn for the development of cruise in India to have uniform services, to have minimum requirements in all the ports. Government of India came out with one circular and wanted all the ports to follow on this. So then there is a uniformity, there should be this, there should be for example, for example, it may appear a very small thing, but if some port does not allow, then it creates a very bad guest experiences and guest experiences are what determines the deployment of the cruise ships. If the, if the guest experiences are bad in the port, then cruise lines plan to skip those ports for future. It's a very important part. So, to bring parity, this was done. Then, there are of course issues, as I said, of financial natures, where GST issues are there, so government is contemplating 
to bring more relaxations, exemptions into that, and the process is on. Industry consultations are going on. Similar issue with the custom duty. Custom duty, because our laws and procedures are made for cargo ships. They are not for cruise ships. So they need it to be changed. And this requires a huge paradigm shift in thinking and also monitoring system. So uh, we are in touch with the custom authorities, with the revenue authorities, that without loss of custom duty, how can we avoid the unpleasantness to the cruise lines and the guests? So this is one effort and we are progressing on that front. I am sure it will bring some good results in time to come. Then marketing is a very important part of it. So the government is also marketing through the ports, through the Ministry of Tourism, taking part into various conferences, travel marts all over the world. Naturally, when a ship repeatedly comes to your port, they look for some kind of volume discount. Especially so the domestic cruises because they come often. And that often means it can be 70, 80, 90 calls in a year for a home ported ship. For example, we have Omni airship from in 2018 making three calls to Goa a week. So naturally it, they look forward for discount. So we have introduce a discount of 20% which actually went up to 40% for the last two years 2018 and uh, 2019 we have given discount of 40% to these ships to encourage of course then various workshops and seminars are held in Mumbai in last four five years Almost there are three to four such uh, workshops, seminars. Uh, I'm glad Victoria is uh, holding this workshop, holding the seminars. They have been so more and more companies, and I'm sure if it was not COVID, I'm sure all the seats would have been filled up to this capacity here. Uh, and I'm sure maybe in another in the next one, which is announced for December 22. He will run out of chairs. February. Uh -huh. February 22. No, no, no. Uh, I think I heard December 22. Yes, yes, next year it's. December 22, yeah. I think by that time you will have difficulty in allocating. Because of the day before yesterday development, there was a panic among other people, so some of them maybe had I understand. Yeah. So, so that's what I'm saying that for the next week, as we come in here, you will have fantastic uh, responses because. This uh, workshop, seminars, everybody want to know. All my previous esteemed speakers, they pointed out how in various aspects like mining industry, even chef industry, everybody is contributing in their own way and everybody wants to know. So naturally these seminars, conferences, they add in their own way for furtherance of this industry. Oh yeah, SOPs. Now this was a big, big, I think uh, it's single most important uh, challenge that was overcome in these last four years. Then I will say that it was overcome in the form of a SOP. I don't know if uh, Malau agrees with this. That if somebody asks me what is the most important thing happened in the cruise industry, one single thing. Then I won't say it is the reduction in charges, I won't say it is construction of cruise channel, I won't say it is the custom duty uh, uh, relaxation, I won't say anything, anything, anything. I will say only one thing that SOPs were drawn. Now, what is the importance of this SOP is because it has brought a standard process across the ports 
to be followed by all the mandatory statutory agencies and also the cruise operators, transporters, tour operators. So this is a very important document of SOPs which has brought what kind of procedures will be uh, required to be or rather say I say what kind of procedures should be limited by these agencies. So like customs, immigration, CIS, ports, port health office, even tourism boards we have included in that, maritime boards, uh, the tour operators, cruise operators, bus operators, even to that level we have, we have brought it. And it is showing some improvements, it, was, it has shown, I won't say that it has happened from 0 to 100, but we are in somewhere at 70, I must say, but if, uh, as we as the industry progresses further, matures further, then result will be more appreciated and appreciable. Training and sensitization, this is also a very important thing of, of the persons, that all these persons from customs, immigration, CS, ports, PHO, even guides, taxi drivers, we have held workshops for all of them in Mumbai port and I think uh, some of people here also we invited them to uh, be a part of it and also to give lectures on that. So it's a, it is bring them across the board. So government initiatives though may not be seen by the industry or by the players in the industry, but it is there the invisible hand. The invisible hand is doing something good also. Last. I will say that Ministry of Tourism is also doing a lot of active areas into that and that is number A. I will say that they are giving grants to the cruise industry infrastructure in various forms. Like uh, if you build a small terminal, they are paying some money. Even to our terminal of 303 crore rupees, they have committed 150 crore rupees. So now, if this 150 crore rupees had not come to us, we would not have built such a huge terminal of 303 crore rupees. Plus, there is a private investment of about 200 crore rupees. So the terminal is going to be worth 500 crore rupees. And from there, if we don't get the uh, money back, naturally, we won't build it. And if we build it, then we will charge on to the customers, that is the cruise lines. And cruise lines in turn will find us very expensive and won't come. So, Ministry of Tourism has said that don't worry, 150 crore rupees I am giving you, so don't charge the cruise lines very heavily. So, this is the kind of a subsidy which the government is also providing. So, my friends, uh, these are the things which the government, the invisible hand is doing in a very invisible manner, and it may not be reaching to all of you that what the government is doing. I, am, I, am, I have a great joy that last four years and half years I am steering this on behalf of the government by doing all this stuff in bits and pieces. Now just to give a, a simple example, this is a slide which I made that who all I deal with as a board and what are the if, uh, concerns that I take care. Now, the Mumbai Portress is the indicative because we are the leaders in the port. So when I am a port, what things I have to look after, what are the my center point of attention? These are one age ship. So all the facilities at birth, at navigation channel, the security of the ship, the safety of the ship, this is a paramount importance and it's time. That at this time, I would give them the services. So this is the ship centric services they can is the passenger centric services so that they are comfort uh, they have comfort in the cruise terminals they have comfort in walking crossing over they are all aged picked passengers so we come sir, uh, uh, i mean we don't have air vehicles to give them the uh, facilities which is available perhaps at say uh, miami or at dubai but i should at least give the facilities which will make them comfortable and not complete discomfort. So that is my second concern. My third concern is the safety, wellness of crew. The crew should be taken well care in the port. So that is where I am 
concentrate. For this, with all this thing, I have to maintain ISPS. ISPS code you must be knowing. It is a very strange code of security brought into uh, picture by uh, America after the Twin Tower blast. So this ISP that International uh, Ship and Port Safety Protocol. So that has also to be observed. So this is the prime concern. And to get this prime concern, what? All these agencies come into the picture. There is the custom, immigration, CIS, Port Health Officer, DG Shipping, State Maritime Boards, State Tourism Promotion Board, then India Tourism, they are very, very uh, proactive. Uh, <coughs> that is the body of the Ministry of Tourism. The Ministry of Shipping also is leading it from front along with the Ministry of Tourism. Then we have even, I'll tell you, the experience of handling the RTOs. The buses come, there are not enough buses. If 60, 70, 80 buses are required, and these buses are not available in Mumbai, so they are blocked from Pune, Nasik, and all those places. So when they come to Mumbai, there is a big challenge that RTO has to be also taken on board. Then state police are very important participant in the progress. I can share with you that how small, small irritants can come. Irritants, they are small, but then they can cause major damages. We have this issue uh, of an international uh, uh, person, the international passengers, uh, which came to Gateway of India. Passengers were key to the Gateway of India. There were old passengers. The bus driver got them as close possible to the Gateway of India. The passengers began to uh, yeah, come out one by one. So time it was taking the time. The police came and ch challenged that driver. And the driver and said that nothing will you are coming. So they they uh, took the bus, they, they sort of seized the bus and the driver was saying, Now that's okay, then they all got down, but now they have to all come back. And where did they go? These are passengers, they are all oldies, they are all they know nothing. They can't understand that what kinds of rules and regulations your country has. They want to get back to the bus. So these are the small, small things which we have to get into. Even a state police, a fellow Havaldar can make the life miserable and can question the entire this apparatus saying that you are useless. The cruise lines will say you are useless, my passengers got stuck there. I will tell you about the next thing, BMC, that is the Bombay Municipal Corporation. They are also trying their best, but we know that there are challenges. So this the passengers when they go for tourist uh, sightseeing and stuff like that and they end up at say for example at Mahalakshmi uh, for Dhobi Ghat. Now where they will go to be if they wanted to go and relieve themselves? After all they are out in a group, we all are there. I use the peak for uh, at least two times here. <laughs> so naturally in these three four hours of their group, uh, of their uh, bus tour, they need to relieve themselves. And you tell me which are the uh, public toilets you will like to be in Mumbai. So how can we expect them to do that? So then we engage with the BMC, which engage with the state to, uh, tourism board, MTDC, do something, do some nice uh, uh, toilets at these important places. So these are the kind of challenges which come into the picture. But anyway, we are all doing that with the active participation of all of you. And I am sure as you create a kind of a huge constituency of demanding stuff, it will happen. Then on the other side, we have the all private uh, stakeholders, cruise lines, cruise agents, tour agents and guides to take care. Uh, the event organizers come and they say, oh, we want this, we want that and that and we have to take care. The transport operators are there, the taxi services, we have to even educate the taxi fellows. A provision supply is garbage collection is a very important issue on the ships, which of course ship agents know very well. So what are the challenges of garbage collection? It may be a very simple thing that garbage collection is not an issue. It is a big issue in the port. When the truck is loaded with the garbage, the security wants you to know whether the right down to the garbage there is some kind of plate or some kind of important cargo that is being taken away. So all those challenges come up. 
stay here that whatever bunker supplies then there are some like conference and services on the in the past few years uh, regarding everything and anything that happens with proofs i think is credited to mr uh, day as the model <laughs> of proofs uh, tourism in india because as he rightly mentioned even the smallest things have affected a uh, call it was key to a very large extent and what he mentioned as the invisible hand behind all these things it is he was actually pushed all these uh, reforms if i may call it and uh, in fact the point of sops which you have brought out uh, very uh, rightly i would say 80 to 90% has been sort of executed and followed by ports which to people like us as port operators is a boon aberrations irritants will be there for a certain extent but i think those can be ironed out so thank you very much